essentially an operating model is how will your business work? Um, it's, it's, it's a combination of the technical expertise, so the nitty-gritty on a daily basis in order for the business to work, there needs to be suppliers, customers, and raw material. And how do those come together? And so um, the operating model is generally linked to how, how the how does the actual business make its money? Um, and that's the question that needs to be answered when you're talking about an operating model. How does it make money and what are the peop who are the people and the um, inputs that are needed for you to get to that point? That's effectively what it is. Probably in every way. So for every business, the external environment definitely impacts you. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to think about it in that sense when I'm operating a spaza shop. Um, but if you think about the fluctuations in the rand, if you think about the change in petrol price, um, those have a direct, if not, then an indirect influence on your business because it impacts um, the price at which you're able to sell, the price at which you're able to buy, the amount of money that your customers have. And so the external environment necessitates you to be aware of, of what's happening because that's, that, that's how business people need to be. Um, if, if your focus is, um, you know, with blinders on, you're missing the point. Um, you, there is no way you can operate a, a, a good business in a silo that, that is not aware of the external environment. And so all those changes that I've mentioned impact those things and, and it needs to be adaptable. The business needs to be um, mendable to those, to those things. Depending on where you sit on the food chain, generally there's nothing you can do about it. So um, there's a particular business that comes to mind um, who was negatively influenced by the drought. So they're not in agriculture, um, they manufacture chips, um, but their main ingredient is uh, maize, grit. And so as a result of the drought, um, the price of the inputs tripled in a month. Um, but the market which they serve can't take on a price increase of three times. And so being able to go into other markets that weren't initially on your radar, there needs to be something that you think about. Um, being able to negotiate um, larger volumes with your customers to be able to take on that increase in price is something that you need to think about. So you have to be quite creative actually because generally um, as a small business, there isn't much that you can actually do, but there is something. Um, and it's almost, you know, to use a cliche, to think out of the box about how do you overcome those challenges. It is important, but it's not critical. So, I mean, the space in which we operate, really, it's not, it's not, it, it's not top of the mind. Um, it would be great, but I mean, as you're saying, the external environment changes daily. And so to incorporate that something like that into a business plan would be quite difficult. What I think would be more useful would be a sensitivity analysis. And so to say, I'm projecting that this is how my business will grow. Uh, and those tend to be quite optimistic. And so to say, if this doesn't happen, what happens if I only make 50% of these sales? Will my business still be able to, to grow? What if my expenses increase by 75%? Will my business still be able to operate? You know, and they don't need to be, you know, those are quite large variances, 50% and 75%. Um, but in the times that we're in, if we think about how the rand has depreciated, um, it's very close to realistic. So I, I, in my view, a, a sensitivity analysis would make more sense than putting in a full market review. Definitely more than technical. So in my experience for, um, and this is a generalization, but it's very easy to focus just on the technical aspects of the business. So the understanding the operations, you know, you can't fault, but it's important to think about the other aspects as well. So um, it's easy to kind of um, say, oh, 
my management accounts, I don't need to worry about that, my accountant will do it. Oh, tax, I don't need to worry about that, my accountant will do it. Um, which is fair if you think about the amount of work that's, that's needed. It's important to have an understanding of that aspect of your business. Um, ha handing it off to your financial accountant is not a bad thing. Um, but it's, an, it's important for you when you receive those financials to be able to say, oh, I need to make changes here. Because that's how you learn to run a business. Also, so it's technical, it's financial and marketing. Um, as in any product that you have, understanding your customer is paramount. And so that comes with being able to market your product or your business or your service the right way. And so those three linkages for me um, are what work together to get the business from A to B. Understanding your business operationally, technically, what does it make to uh, get this business going? Understanding the financials and the drivers behind those financials and then the marketing. And you have these three that interplay, that take you and give you that general business understanding.